This is the big one in Progressive American Flat Track. We are in Springfield. And for our singles class, we're going to go back to back with a doubleheader action packed on the short track. I'm the best dude here as far as ability wise. I really just need to go out there and do one thing, and that's the win. We worked so hard this year. The team worked so hard. Let the race begin. Yeah. We're underway. The carrot is there. Can he go after it? It doesn't take much for a guy to go down. Wow, that was close. That was the pressure point. Looking fantastic. Wow, I did not expect this. If he ruffles some feathers along the way, so be it. Can't say these guys aren't tough. They take the win. Unbelievable run. You don't often see domination like this. How impressive is that? What a performance. We haven't been disappointed. It's the Springfield Mile short track doubleheader. Fairgrounds have a big mile track for our twins machines in progressive AFT, but today we'll focus on the singles. Max Whale has taken the points lead. Young Australian ahead of last year's champion Dallas Daniels, who had a vicious couple of crashes at our last event in Peoria. And Cole Zabala finished second at our last event in Peoria. He is a contender as well. Jason Wigand joined with former Grand National champion Brad Baker. Kristen Beat will be patrolling from the short track and should be very interesting. Dallas Daniels needs to make up some ground on Max Whale on the points because it was a rough one for him in Peoria. So here we go, Brad. Yeah, definitely 16 points behind after that crash in Peoria. I'm looking at Morgan Mishler back only 34 points out, though. He's been coming on really strong, so he can get himself up in the mix before the end of the season. Always a story in the singles class how many different riders can win, and you go to a short track like this where there's bound to be some aggressive riding. You never know. So let's go back to Peoria. Here's the big crash from Dallas Daniels. Yeah, you see how he's trying to pull a tear off, and with like the choppiness of the front straightaway, the front end just started getting away from him, and over the bars he went. I mean, that was like a 75 mile per hour crash. Just lucky that he was relatively okay. And he'd already crashed earlier in that main. Let's get an update from Kristen. After two horrific incidents in Peoria, Dallas Daniels is back on track here in Springfield. Now, we spoke extensively during the week and today. He has elected not to share the exact details of those injuries with anyone in the public or in the paddock. However, I can tell you those injuries were minimal. He's battling some discomfort due to heavy bruising. However, nothing that will affect his mobility on the bike here tonight. Now, I also asked him if since Peoria, maybe his mentality or his outlook on the championship has changed. He told me that not not once has he thought his season was over. Now, I also checked in with Max Whale, who now has a 16-point advantage over Dallas Daniels. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, you know, I got a 16-point lead. It's nice. Um, you know, this race here, so it's going to be a very important because uh, it's very short track. Um, a lot of stuff can happen. And, uh, and, you know, sort of all over the show, a lot of new people in the class today, uh, a lot of wild cards, and uh, they could play a role in it for sure. Uh, a lot of good short trackers here today. Um, and yeah, as I said, you just got to be smooth, smart, and consistent, and uh, yeah. So here is the short track. Trevor Bruner actually won our last event here a year ago. What's this track all about? You got to be aggressive on a short track. I mean, it almost ends up being a fist fight in a phone booth. These guys are going to be aggressive with each other. And as you can see of that overhead, it has this, the corners are almost as long as the straightaways. So the guys are going to be turning all the way around it. That's going to be make it hard to pull tear offs. Got some really loose material. So you're going to be pulling a lot of them. All right. So let's show you what it looks like with our semis. This is qualifying. Daniels down to the inside. Not a good start for Whale. This is semi number one. It's to earn some spots into the main event. Yeah, it's hard to get the suspension set up good on this racetrack. You can see the riders are just bucking around. It makes it really hard to be able to get it around the racetrack. Trevor Bruner led. Mischler was second. Daniels took second place away. Daniels tries to run Bruner down, runs out of time. So Bruner showing again some short track speed. Well back in fifth. Gonna want to pick up the game for the main. Semi number two. Good start for Mikey Rusher on the outside of the Yamaha trying to get the lead. And look at Cody Cobb, a young rider, 16 years old and super strong. He squares Mikey back up here, riding like a veteran. Oh, love to see it. Been a bit of a struggle as of late for Rush. So he got one of the veterans against one of the kids, and the kid comes out on top. Second generation rider, the legendary Joe Cobb is his dad, and Cody is on the podium. Yep, Cody Cobb earning his first semi win. Now, Cody, during that race, you and Mikey Rush just battling back and forth. At one point, you left the door open, but you're able to work your way around Mikey once again to take that semi win. But 
during that race, I noticed that you twitched up your lines a few times. I mean, what was going on out there and how decisive did you have to be in deciding your lines? I got a good start. I almost went a little early. That was a long light and uh, yeah, Mike and I raced clean back and forth. I left the door way open down the back straight the one lap. I was way out on the concrete it felt like, but uh, yeah, just ready for the main event. First time we're gonna be first or second pick in the main, so uh, keep the momentum rolling. We got a long night ahead of us. Can't thank everybody enough, like uh, Jones Honda, Smart Top, Latest Motors Racing, Fast Track Racing, Arai, Oakley Fly, Rod Lakes here. I saw him earlier, good to see him. He's on my team, and uh, yeah, thanks to everybody for all the help, and uh, ready for the main. Dallas Daniels is ready for it as well. Can he make up points on Max Whale here on the short track in the always unpredictable world of AFT singles? It's the first half of a doubleheader, so stay with us. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Mission Foods, which has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. And by Law Tigers, you never have to ride alone. So we're set for the first of two races tonight here at the Springfield Short Track. Let's send it to Kristen Beat. As bikes are lined up getting ready to head out on track, I am borrowing temporarily Max Whale's backup bike just to kind of explain how the riders are making a few tweaks and adjustments before they go out and race this incredibly aggressive track. They're actually adjusting their body and their body placement on the bike. So generally, riders like to ride kind of center mid saddle. However, here at the short track, they're gonna scoot forward and, and move their body forward and, and almost kind of straddle the gas tank at a point. They're gonna be further forward on the bike because they want the bike to have more weight towards the front end. Generally, when they sit here, you'll see them move back towards the rear end of the bike to gain rear traction. However, at the short track, that is the last thing you want. Also, I've noticed a lot of the riders actually adjust their body posture. They'll lean over the handlebars because you are always turning here. Also, the final thing I noticed, riders generally take their foot on and off the foot peg, right? They want that balance when they're turning here. There's no time to think about putting your foot back on the foot peg. So for the most part, riders will have their left foot down this entire race as they are turning to race more aggressively. Just a way these riders are adjusting to meet the demands of this aggressive track. So here is Dallas Daniels bouncing back from those injuries at the last event. Doesn't have much time to do it. He's got to make up ground on Whale on the points. Cody Cop, who knows? He could grab the win tonight. The young kid looking excellent in qualifying, but short track, really hard to say, Brad, who is the favorite? Anything can happen. Yeah, really anything can happen at all. I mean, these riders are gonna get it really aggressive. They have to, I mean, Dallas Daniels has to come out strong and get this win and hope that Max Whale is further back in the pack. And there's your full lineup. Shayna Texter Bauman back there, 13th, struggling in qualifying. As we get set for our main, that's row three. There's your series leader, Whale on the inside there. Bruner on the inside of row one. You got Cop, Rush, and Daniels up front. Let's go racing here in the short track. Oh, Cop, what a jump. Really good start by Cody Cop. But look at Bruner right up the inside, taking over the lead. Wow, they got close. You see that aggressive race we're talking about. They almost collide. The two Yamaha riders now able to get underneath Cop. Rush to second. Daniels couldn't make the pass. Yeah, there's going to be some ruts that form coming off the corner. You see these guys getting out of shape. It's going to get worse as the race goes on. And Rush around the outside takes the lead from Bruder. Rush on the gas hard. I mean, that's not an easy pass to be able to go around the outside on a short track. So, oh, and a couple of mistakes there, but Bruder able to keep pace with the leader. They're stretching it a bit on Daniels, who's back and forth. Yeah, you see how Rush just quickly grabbed the tear off. I mean, you got to be so fast on this track to be able to do it. And now, Cop is putting more pressure on Bruner for second. Where is Whale? He's pretty much mid-pack right now. And then Daniels in fourth gonna make up some ground. No, Whale starting to make passes. You'll see him on the inside. And yeah, Dallas has some ground to make up as well, but this is a physical racetrack. These guys are wrestling the bike all the way around the track because you're always turning, so their physicality is gonna come into uh, the, the race here later in the main event for sure. Is this the type of track where you'll even forget to breathe? 
because you're just not intense all the way around? It is, for sure. I mean, you definitely got to learn to, like, be loose. You know, if you're tense riding the bike, you know, with uh, just gripping onto the bars, you're going to get arm pumped super fast. Looking good for Rush right now, who went DNQ 13 at our doubleheader in New York. Our previous rounds, he was super frustrated with his results there. I saw him at the airport headed back from the track. Much better here, leading the way right out of Northern California. But Bruner is there to put pressure on. You can see how these guys are just warriors. I mean, look at Bruner and Dallas in the top four here after both going down super hard at Peoria only a couple weeks ago. It just shows how strong these guys are. And don't count out Cop, the teenager. Well, actually, he and Daniels are both teenagers. They're third and fourth, stalking your lead duo. Cop's right there. And yeah, Bruner tried to pull a tear off there. It doesn't look like he quite got it. You know, if you start to get your vision impaired on a track like this, it's definitely going to affect you as well. Ah, it's so fun to watch. Everyone making little mistakes, and then it changes. Daniels will lose ground, he'll catch up. Cop will lose ground, he'll catch back up. Same thing with Bruner and the leader. Oh, Bruner almost went for a ride. Yeah, you can see these guys, how they're basically having to turn all the way down the back straightaway. So when you're trying to accelerate, you're sliding, it's like they're all those little ruts, the rear tire's going to be grabbing it. And as you can see, it's making the riders get out of shape. And Daniels was able to make a move on Cop. Could he make it stick? Yes, he holds it into turn one and two. All the way around three and four, and now looking to make a similar move on Bruner. I like Daniel's line. You can see how he kind of goes up wide and then gets the bike turn. He's almost, he's trying to make a straightaway. So instead of turning all the way down the straightaway, he's getting it, getting it turned early and then being able to drive straight down the straightaway. Bruner here on the progressive Honda. Got two Estes and Yamahas right there with him. He was trying to get Rush. Open the door for Daniels to take second. Uh, no, not quite that one, but he's going to get him here, looks like. He might get him both. Daniels trying to take second, nearly took the lead away. And then Bruner, I think he bumped Rush, and Bruner's going to take the lead. And Bruner is riding aggressive, I mean, on the gas, not in, shutting the door, not letting Daniels get by. Unbelievable. So I thought Bruner was going back to third. He is now in the number one spot, and Daniels is trying to get his teammate Rush. Unbelievable racing here. Although at the same time, it's exactly what you expect of this Brickfield short track. Even the Yamaha teammates nearly making contact. Daniels locking down second. Can he run down the leader? This is some great racing. Progressive American flat track here at NBCSN. The Springfield short track in our singles class. Trevor Bruner on the number 21 leads. Dallas Daniels on the number one has taken second away from his teammate Mikey Rush. And you know Daniels wants to go for the lead. Yeah, Daniels starting to kind of creep up on the backside of Bruner. I mean, there's quite a bit of racing left here still. If Bruner makes a big mistake, Dallas is going to be right there to capitalize on it. The main event is just a little over six minutes, but I would imagine it feels like a lot longer than that. Yeah, it really does. I mean, like I said, this track is super physical with how these guys are having to wrestle the bike all the way, all the way around the track. They get towards the end and they're like, man, I'm ready for this to be over. <laughs> <laughs> Daniels looking for an opening. They pulled away just a bit on Rush. You had Cop in the battle earlier. They stretched it a tad bit on him. You see him in fourth. Is it a one-on-one -on -one duel now? And can Daniels figure out a way to get around Bruner? Yeah, Wales deep in the pack right now. If the finishing order uh, ends the way it is, he's going to make up a lot of points here. Yeah, he's not even in the top five, your series leader. And Daniels, second in the series, wants the maximum points haul. He's right there looking for room on Bruner. I can see that Dallas is quite a bit smoother than Bruner. Bruner is still pushing it really hard, but he's not as smooth as Daniels, so that could mean a mistake is coming by, by Bruner here soon. Is Daniels going to push the envelope and get aggressive, or will he just try to hang in there and wait for a mistake? Only about 30 seconds left. Yeah, Bruner can definitely feel the pressure. He knows that Daniels is there, especially right here, taking that inside Ooh. line. And when the clock expires, it will be two to go. Let's see. Are they going to get there in time? We got some lappers coming up. This could definitely play, play a factor. Oh, there it is, Daniels. Been working this line, and this time takes the lead. It'll be two to go next time around. I thought that Bruner was going to be able to square him back up, but not quite. So now Daniels is going to be looking at the white flag after the next circuit. Oh, Bruner not giving up. He's got a wheel on the inside. Not enough. And yeah, now he's taking that inside line in one, two. 
It's a big clutch for Dallas Daniels, bouncing back from big crashes at our last event. One lap away from bringing the first leg of the doubleheader home. All right, Brenner's going to have to get aggressive on this last corner. Oh, he got some run on him. Got a run. Oh, He's going to give him a wheel, no. and he takes him down. Wow. And Daniels is slow to get up. Checkers are out just like that, and Bruner has the win. Man, that was... He's seen a little bit of a hole and he went for it. I mean, this is short track racing, but that was maybe a little too aggressive. Well, a disaster here because Daniels, who could have won the race, he's mad. And just like that, the entire field rolls past him. He's gonna finish, I would assume, somewhere in the teens, at least out of the top 10. Check it out again. Hey, yeah, you see, he comes in hot, a little bit hot on the inside. Rear tire grabs a hole and just kind of stands him up right into the side of of Dallas. I mean, these two grew up racing together. I don't think he meant to take him out, but uh, he definitely meant to get in there and be aggressive. And what a shakeup this would be in the standings for Daniels to go from first or second at worst. And there's the reaction from his family in the stands. Bruner, meanwhile, is going to win the race. And Mikey Rush, who is strong all night, finishes his second Michler Cop Zabala, the top five. So Whale takes six. That's not great, but Daniels is 15th. So Whale is going to stretch his points lead. What a wild last lap shakeup. Let's go to Kristen. Trevor, some may describe that pass as aggressive. From your perspective, first of all, was the contact you made with Dallas Daniels intentional? And would you replicate that pass? Uh, yeah, no, I would never replicate that pass again. It was... Um you know, we're all riding aggressive and we're all riding hard, but uh, I understand on my part that uh, that was a, a bad judgment call. And, um, you know, I'm, my condolences to the, to the Essence and team. I know how much work they put in and uh, I know I know that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't called for. So, uh, yeah, my deepest apologies to everybody. And um, but on the flip side, you know, hats off to my uh, American Honda Turner Racing whole team um they all put in a great effort and um yeah definitely a bad judgment call and i'm very sorry for the essence and team and dallas daniels in a moment like that when things are happening so quickly i know it's hard to make judgment calls such as that but what was going through your mind when you made that final pass you know i just i, I wanted to go for the win and i knew um you know everybody everybody out here wants to win and um you know we will do what we have to do but at some some instances are, are, are not right to make. I flirted with that line and I know it was, uh, it was over the line. Lessons learned out here, guys. Well, you gotta admire the honesty there, Brett. Wow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, him and Dallas grew up racing together. He wasn't gonna do that intentionally. He wanted to take the win, but you know, things happen on a short track. And what happens now is Daniels is 27 points behind Whale after taking 15th. We'll send it back to the podium with Kristen. A lot of drama here. Earlier in the day, Mikey Rush said to me, I need to shake this winless streak. I need to get out of my slump. For a moment there, you had it in that main event. However, you digressed during the main event, moving further back in the pack. Were you able to maybe isolate where you guys are off, and can you make the improvements necessary to maybe get that first win of the season in tonight? Uh, absolutely. The, I got the best team out here, man. They, uh, we adapt to the track, and uh, we kind of, I was kind of, I, I should have adapted myself to the track a little bit. I knew it was going to get that rough, but I was kind of started riding cautious, and then you seen what happened. I, I kind of dropped back a little bit, and Trevor was running a good race, and, and Dallas was coming by. And uh, But hats off to my team, man. That, the whole SSN Racing Group is just, like, phenomenal. It's a dream come true to be a part of this deal. And uh, everyone on the team works their tails off just week in and week out. And it's just the least I can do is get back. I've been in a bit of a slump right now just on my part, not the team's part, just my part, and trying to get out of that slump and uh, move forward and finish out the year strong. Mikey, best of luck in main event number two. That's right, everybody gonna re-rack it and be back. Didn't even see Morgan Mischler up there early. Made a good comeback for third. Someone who is very excited to round out the podium in this first main event. Morgan, these short tracks, I mean, you own them. And I remember last year you were on the podium as well here. Uh, Morgan, what can you tell us about the conditions out there? And I mean, it just looked like a dog fight. What did, what did they say earlier in this week? A fist fight in a phone booth. Yeah. Uh, we had a second row start, so we knew we had our work cut out for, for us from the beginning. And, you know, it was just a matter of, you know, once you get up there, sustaining your uh, lines and being as close to the front as you could. And 
for a little bit in the middle. I lost those guys, and you know it's unfortunate that Dallas went down. Definitely a bummer. You know I know he's definitely still feeling that Peoria jump crash. So uh, just the biggest thing is hats off to my team. Just really happy with this fan turnout. It's great to see a packed house. It's I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. I'm glad we can put on a show. Well done, Morgan. Good job rounding out the podium. And guys, if, if we're talking a little funny, it's because there's a delay on the other end. And so sometimes that throws us off down here. But uh, we're going to toss it back up to you. All right. Thanks, Kristen. And bittersweet here for Trevor Bruner. And we are now hearing that pass is under review by AFT and AMA Pro Racing. So we'll see how this all shakes out when we return. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. And Honda's all-new Talon 1000X4 is the official sport side-by-side -side of American Flat Track. Breaking news here. They have changed the results of the first leg of our Springfield short track doubleheader. Trevor Bruner ran into Dallas Daniels on the last lap. Here's the review. And what they're going to do is revert back to the previous lap, the next to last lap scoring, which would mean Daniels is now the winner and Bruner will be penalized to the back of the lead lap riders, which will put him in 11th. So a massive shakeup for the series standings now. Dallas Daniels will be credited with the win tonight. Yeah, that move was a little over aggressive. I mean, he put another rider's safety in jeopardy, so it's only fair to put him towards the end of the pack instead of Daniels. Well, what that really changes, Daniels, we had 27 points down. Instead, going from 15th to first, he's down only eight to whale in the standings. And we've got more racing to go. It's a double header qualifying for our second main event. We'll show you semi number three here. And Dallas Daniels and Trevor Bruner are both in it. Yeah, leaving off right where they were before. But it looks like a great start from the inside from Bruner taking the whole shot. Yep, and Daniels right there. Side by side is that Mischler with them. And look at Mischler right in third. This is a better start than he had in the first semifinal. This could mean a good result by him if he's able to start more towards the front of the pack in the main event. Yeah, it's all battle for grid position, starting line spots for the main. So Mischler had a, had a comeback. It's much better here as Bruner leads Daniels again. Now look, there's no hard feelings really. It's Daniel Roos Evans, by the way, shout out. He's the one battling Mischler. Bruner apologized profusely to Daniels, so I don't think you're gonna see revenge tactics on either rider here. No, not at all. I mean, uh, these riders, they understand that you're going for it, and sometimes you make a, a move and it's a bad judgment call, and you know, it's a short track race and it happens. And now Max Whale getting up in the picture in fifth. Series leader has struggled so far here in Springfield. Oh. Daniels! <laughs> Almost oh. got him again, going way down low, almost down the dust. Uh, we do not want to see more contact between these two. That was as close as you could get. Yeah, this is almost like bragging rights. Let's go over it again. Let's let's finish it off fair. Well, yeah, pretty rare to have a double header set up like this where you have a controversial finish and then you got to go right back on the track. And what a move. That was an awesome move. Dallas got it turned early, almost squared right to the center of the corner and went right underneath him. That was a that was a great move. He couldn't quite hold it though, which has allowed Bruner to hold the inside, and finally Daniels locks it down. Now Daniels, he got some clean clean air now. You know he's been behind Bruner a lot tonight. Let's see what he's able to do with some laps of clean air. Yep, and this one's just about over. So Daniels. Well, the best revenge is living well, and he's looking for a straight-up win in this qualifying semi over Bruner, and Daniels gets it. Mischler going to take it home in third. Wales fifth just cannot quite get it figured out tonight on the short track. And Daniels, with new life in this series, carries the momentum into the main event. How about it? Daniels crashed out of Peoria. It looked like he was going to crash out of leg one of our doubleheader. Instead, he's credited with the win. More momentum out of semi three. And we've got one more qualifying race to go. We've got him on the line. It's Cody Kopp on the inside, the 143. Rush, who is second in our first main, next to him, Zabala. And Hunter there out of Canada on the outside, and a great jump for Zabala. Yeah, Zabala from third over. I mean, this would be awesome for him to get a great result here after having a wrist injury only about a month ago. Looking really strong. And leading them around. Oh, and a bit of a bumping and banging. So Hunter Bauer going for the lead. 
Yeah, Hunter Bauer, a Canadian rider. He wrote, grew up racing on a lot of cushion racetracks, so, I mean, he's right at home here. And Cop not giving up on it. Just reason the low line, I thought he was going to go from fourth to first at one point. Man, Hunter Bauer was hucking and bucking all the way down that straightaway. I'm watching Cop. He's going outside, inside, all over. He's up to the number two spot and wants to take the lead. Way in the outside. That's what I love about this racetrack. I mean, it's consistent top to bottom. These riders can really get creative with their lines. And Bauer and Cop, what a battle they are having for second. They've been side by side most of this race, but Zabala's still in the lead. Whoa, he almost threw it away. I think that Cody Cop might be able to get him here. He goes all the way to the top side, gets it turned uh, a little too far around the racetrack that time. Oh, but he did get a good drive off using that outside. It could work. And he's going to keep trying. Yeah, it's like an out, outside inside mover. He's trying to make a straightaway, so instead of turning all the way down the straightaway, if he goes up wide, gets a turn, he actually drives straight for a while, which is quite a bit easier and it gives you an awesome drive. Yes, and he has a little less pressure from that rush and power battle behind him. So a little more room to work with. Now he's taking a little bit more of an inside line, not quite getting the drive as what he was before. Well, they've thrown everything at Cole Zabala, and he continues to hold the lead, and now the white flag is out in this final qualifying race. Yeah, Zabala's a Southern Illinois native, so he's not far from home. And he's going to try to bring it home. Final two turns here. I don't think Hop has it. No. So how about Cole Zabala? A solid performance. Great battles as expected here at the short track. So our final qualifying race is done, and he is in with a win. Shayna Texter Bauman ends up seventh. Ream right ahead of her. Kalkman, one position ahead of that. And there are your final results. So we're going to be set for the main event. But first, let's talk tires here in the short track. Dunlop Tire Talk. So the teams and riders have two options tonight. They got the R3, which is a super soft compound, and then they got the R5, which is a medium compound. In my opinion, I believe all of them are going to be running the R3 because this is a soft, loamy dirt, so usually a softer tire to let that, tr that tread lug move around gives you more traction. Traction has not been a problem for Dallas Daniels, who won our first leg of the doubleheader. Also strong in qualifying, Trevor Bruner, always good at this track. They'd like to slug it out without contact for our next main event win. Well, this should be epic. Progressive American flat track. Our first main event was wild. Dallas Daniels, that's his crew there. Seemed like he was going for a win. He got taken out. And then a penalty for our race winner, Trevor Bruner, resulted in Daniels being rewarded with the win anyway. And after all that, we're ready for the second leg of a doubleheader. Daniels now staring down the face of back-to-back -back wins. There is Bruner, who has been just as quick as Daniels throughout the evening. Max Bale has struggled big time, only ninth in the grid for your series leader. He could lose the points lead if it keeps up like this. So, so much on the line. Six minutes and two laps to determine the winner of the second leg of the doubleheader. Daniels has a good grid spot, but man, I don't even know. There's been so much we've already seen, Brad. Yeah, it's really Dallas's race to lose here. I mean, he has pole position. That's usually the best starting position. So let's see if he's able to get the whole shot. And the Honda's on his flank. Cop on the outside, Bruner and Zabala. Zabala very quick in his semi. They will challenge him for certain. Let's go racing again. The Springfield short track. Wow, an amazing launch by Cole Zabala. Gets the whole shot. And Bruner right there. Daniels as well. Cop around the outside. So Zabala picking up where he left off the semi, leading early. Yeah, he is, but look at Bruner out around the outside trying to get the lead as quick as he can up in the cushion. Ooh, making that racetrack wide. Daniels trying to sneak underneath the Turner progressive Honda teammates. They're still 1-2. Now Bruner gets back to the inside. He knows that he can't stay up there too long, so he'll be leaving the door open for Daniels to get by. And Daniels almost did it. Same thing with Cop from fourth. So two different lines, high line, low line. Yeah, when you take that high line, you really got to be on the gas and keeping up the momentum because, like I was saying, leaving the door open is going to let a rider be able to come up underneath you. Ooh, and almost Whoa. the rematch. Well, how about that? And Zabala gets knocked out by Bruner. Man, that's teammates. I mean, I don't think uh, that just got close. You've seen Zabala kind of hook a hole coming off a of turn two, open the door, but... Man, it was, that was just close between him and Bruner. Look, if, if you're Bruner, who got bumped back from 1st to 11th with a penalty in our first race, that's not what you want to be a part of again. No, no, not at all. I mean, 
We'll see what happens here if, if Bruner is able to start back on the front row. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's racing on a track like this, but there is a such a thing as being overly aggressive. Well, that's the thing. I know it's going to look like he's a mercenary out there taking people down, but these are just a game of inches here. It really is. And you see how Zabala got out of shape and started to come back down, and Bruner just happened to be there. So I, I can't really pinpoint that on being Bruner's fault all the way. Yeah, exactly. On short tracks, things happen in a hurry, and it doesn't take much to completely change what you intended to have happen. So we'll see how they re-rack this. A red flag, a restart, and we'll see what the grid positions will be when we get back to the line. Dallas Daniels hoping to take advantage of this mess. Maybe grab the points lead. So we reset the order after a crash and a red flag here. Progressive American flat track. Cole Zabala went down. It looked like he got hit by his teammate, but he actually told the officials it was my fault. I made the mistake on the outside. So he has to take the penalty. He is all the way next to last on the grid. Zabala, who looks so fast. As for Bruner, who was involved in that crash, no penalty for him. It was not deemed his fault, so he gets to restart up front. Yeah, there's a lot of laps left here, and Zabala's been super fast all day. It's going to be interesting to see how far he's able to get himself up in the pack here. So Bruner at the lead position, Daniels and Kopp second and third as we get ready to re-rack and race again here at the short track. You can see the intensity of the, these guys. I mean, they're just focused on the green light. Oh, and they're sending Zabala all the way back now. Yeah, he was next to last on the grid. Now he is last. Tough break for Zabala, but you saw the replay. You said it, Brad. He actually bobbled on the outside. Yeah, he did. I mean, you see a lot of these riders just getting out of shape, coming off the corner, hooking the ruts, and maybe not getting the bike set up good enough. So he's going to have to learn from that mistake. All right, so it's Cole Zabala on the 51 Hondas in the back. The 21 Honda of Trevor Bruner going to lead them off. Here we go, and a great jump from Kopp from third. And he's trying to take the measure of Daniels for second. Man, I almost thought he was going to get in the side of Daniels there. That was a tricky move that he did going up the inside. And Mikey Rush back in at fourth place on that blue Essence and Yamaha around the outside also. Let's yeah, see if Mikey's able to hold with these guys. He's always strong right at the beginning, but he seems to fade about halfway through. Daniels able to fend off the pressure from Kopp and refocus the attack on the leader, Bruner. I cannot believe this. We have the rematch of Bruner and Daniels. Yeah, Daniels is going to have to get by him earlier in the main event this time and try to get a little bit of distance on him. I mean, it came down to the last couple laps in the previous main event. There is plenty of time. Four and a half minutes and two laps on a short track. Lots of laps left. And there's Max Whale. Probably about the best we've seen him ride so far. It has been a struggle for your series leader. Yeah, I think that's definitely the furthest up that we've seen. I mean, if he can finish with a fifth, I mean, it's not great, but it's a lot better than what he was in the first main event. Now, is there something about the short track that doesn't work for Whale, or is he just having a bad night uh, in general? I think he's just having a bad night in general. I mean, this racetrack is very hard to get the bike set up, as we can see how the bike is kind of moving around a lot. If you don't get the bike set up good, I mean, it's going to be very hard to be able to get it around the racetrack smoothly. Okay, so he can rod a short track well. It's just not happening here. Exactly, for sure. Okay, so we go back to Daniels, who has been great. Oh, but then almost throws it away. And he got kind of cross-rutted there, got on the outside of a rut, and it came around on him fast. That's the last thing he wants to do is put it on the ground. And just that little error allows the Turner Racing Honda of Bruner to pull away just a bit, and Daniels starting to reel him back in. And how about Cody Kopp sitting in third? I mean, another podium finish for a 16-year-old rider. I mean, that's impressive with the amount of talent that's in this class. Yeah, you're really seeing the young kids toward the front. He and Daniels, they're amateur riders just a few years ago. Bruner, yeah. Bruner is as well. Bruner and, uh, and Dallas are basically the same age. So, I mean, we've got three teenagers, one, two, three. Unbelievable. And Whale is 19, so he's no slouch as well. Time starting to click off. Oh, no, I thought Bruner was starting to get away, and Daniels is back to him. Yeah, there's just one little mistake on a track like this, and, you know, fitness is definitely going to have to, is coming in right now. I mean, start to be at the end of this main event. Look at the run that Dallas had there. And Rush has taken third away. So one of the veterans started to move forward. He's gotten around Cop, 
two different battles to watch. The battle for third and the battle for the lead, and you've got to figure it's not over with these two. Yeah, that's a great thing about short track racing is that there's a, there's a battle on the racetrack everywhere that you see. Oh, Daniels had a wheel there on Bruner. Again, Bruner was penalized after the hit in the first main, but he apologized. I don't think there's bad blood between these two. They just want the win badly. Oh, Dallas got by him that time. Carried it in hot going into turn three, slid up underneath him. Let's see if he's able to hold on to it. Oh, it was setting up. They were side by side. He was able to complete it. And now a few more mistakes from Bruner and Daniels marching away. And you see as the track starting to get a little bit brushed off that Dallas is almost two wheeling a little bit more rolling through the corners instead of being sideways. It's a lot smoother doing it that way and he's keeping up his momentum. What a run this would be for Daniels if he can sweep these two events. Morgan Mishler now on the 13, a, a factor, battling out this cop and rush battle. Yeah, Mishler, if he can get on the podium again like we were seeing earlier in the points, I mean, he can really get himself, you know, possibly in condition per second with Max Whale having a bad night. Daniels marching away from Bruner. How will Bruner play it? You know, he doesn't want to get too aggressive, but at the same time, not going to hand anybody a win. Rush Cop, Mishler still battling for third, fourth, and fifth. Bruner's not giving up. He's still looking for different lines. Yeah, he really is. You see him taking that lower line, going into turn one, trying to just cut off as much time as he can. But he just can't make any mistakes. Look at these lappers, though. This could really play a factor if Dallas doesn't get him through, get through them cleanly. Oh, they're holding him up. He had a nice lead, though. A little bit of a cushion to work with. Ah, he gets by him there. That wasn't too bad. Let's see if Bruner can get through him just as quick. That was Damon Ream on the 110. Daniels is through. Bruner trying to do the same. And no, nope, couldn't make it happen. So now Daniels really pulling away. Yeah, I think that was all it really took there. Now he got a lot of breathing room. Daniels going for the sweep. This would be so clutch in the series after he crashed out of Peoria, our last event. It looked like he could have won that. He crashed, he crashed again, lost a ton of points. I didn't even know if he'd be back to race here. There wasn't a lot of time between events. No, and he did have some small injuries. I mean, he had a tiny fracture in his right ankle and one in his ribs. So, I mean, wasn't like he was just banged up. I mean, he had a couple uh, couple fractures. So this is super impressive him to be able to come out and be so strong on a physical racetrack. Yeah, and a double header. Oh, adrenaline. Look at this here. Whoa, what a battle. Three oh, wide no. oh, rush down. And Rush almost got hit. You just never know here in the short track. And now some concern with the Estenson Yamaha team. They've had a rough weekend. Man, that just got close. I mean, they're coming in the lappers. You know, Mishra looked like he had a really good run on him, but they got into the lappers. Maybe Mikey just had to shut it down right away, and it came in. And you see, yeah, Mishra, good sportsmanship. Oh, he's actually able to help him up. So Mishra and Rush, they're in that big battle for third along with Cop. I mean, these riders never, you know, like to be the, uh, you know, the culprit of somebody, the rider going down, putting somebody else. Oh, you see, good, good run by Mishra up the inside, but. Looked like Mikey kind of tried to shut the door because of the riders on the outside and just, wow, almost got ran over there. A good job to the riders in the back for not getting him, but yeah, Mishler just got in a little too hot and that's all it took. And we'll give you the lineup. We are going to restart it. So Dallas Daniels was pulling away and with the restart, new life for Trevor Bruner and the Yamaha people, they're super nervous. Not only did they lose Rush, but Daniels has lost the gap. And you can see all the team members there just anxiously watching. I mean, this is a tr this is the nail botter of a race to watch. And Mishler's okay. He is third on the grid ahead of Cop, and that will help Max Whale in the 18, the Red Bull KTM, just to be inside the top five and try to salvage some points. Pressure time for Dallas Daniels. He had the lead. He had a gap. It's gone now. Can Bruner make one more run? And yeah, Mishler in third, I mean, that's that's great for him if he can finish on the box again. Here we go, one final restart to decide it in Springfield. And Daniels nailed it. Exactly what he needed to do to get the whole shot again, just try to get out of town. We're on board here with Cop. He's right in that fight to try to get the podium. Man, that's an awesome view. I think he has it, he got underneath Mishler. Oh, can the young kid put it up on the box as Daniels tries to establish the lead again? Wow, look at Mishra actually got shuffled back there quite a bit. Look, is that, 
Is that Zabala in fourth? Unbelievable! It is. From last on the restart. See, yeah, he was able to put his head down. That restart definitely helped him. Unbelievable. Now white flag is out. Dallas Daniels gets it done. Two wins here at Springfield. And almost a podium for Zabala. Wow, would that have been cool? Unbelievable. So it is going to be Bruner in second. Cop going to take third. And the Midwestern kid, Dallas Daniels, delivered. There was some drama in race one, race two. He just won it fair and square. Yeah, did exactly what he needed to do. I mean, this could potentially bring it, bring the points lead back to him. Yeah, because, well, he was fifth on the restart. He ends up ninth. A bunch of riders headed back to the front. Rush did a good job salvaging it. You saw what Zabala did from way back. So a first and a ninth with our two championship contenders. What a dramatic night for Dallas Daniels. Resiliency, the ability to be able to keep yourself up and keep fighting. Dallas, you exhibited resiliency out on track tonight. When we spoke earlier in the day, you had seemed so energized about racing in front of your hometown crowd, but to be able to come out and have a night like this and rebound in the final main event, what is this team made of? Uh, this team is made of hard work and determination is pretty much all it is. You know, after a week in Lake Peoria, nobody really wants to see that, and it was tough, you know. Um, I haven't been uh, been in that position this so far in my career, and you know it was uh, it was a little sad because I thought we had the speed there, and you know definitely sore coming into here. But the team and they believe in me, and they just uh, I can't thank the whole Essence and Monster Energy Yamaha team enough. I went to the shop uh, a few days ago before this race, and those guys do not stop working, and that's just uh, that's why we're up here tonight. And, just uh, super crazy that we could rebound like this. Um, obviously, the first main event didn't go as planned, but we were able to rebound and get a win here tonight, and that's all that matters. Well done, and congratulations. Enjoy this win, Dallas. Well, it's two wins because he sweeps the doubleheader, and just like that, Dallas Daniels goes from dire championship circumstances to the points lead. We'll unpack the rest of the podium stories from the Springfield Short Track after this. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle, official partner of Progressive American Flat Track. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. And Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. Podium time for Trevor Bruner. Let's go back with Kristen. Trevor, a very solid night tonight, but I have to ask you, all things considered, did you have any anxiety or hesitation when racing Dallas earlier in that race? Uh, I mean, it was definitely in the back of my mind. You know, uh, I, I never want to race somebody like that. And, uh, you know, it was in the back of my mind, but, um, you know, we kind of worked on uh, right before we were out in the main event, just putting it behind us. You know, it is what it is. Um, definitely not stoked about it. And uh, but, you know, put it behind us because we had another race to to go after. And, um, you know, that's what I did. And, um, you know, Dallas won that fair and square and uh, all hats off to him. He rode great. I, and, uh, you know, I did my best. And, um, you know, we, we've had a good night. Big thanks to my whole team. It's been a great help and I'm um, looking forward to what we can do the rest of the season. Well done. Yeah, good bounce back for him. And look at this. Daniels, we thought might have been down 20 some points. He's up seven after sweeping. Yeah, that's exactly what Dallas needed to do. I mean, Max has to be a little bit sweating in his boots now. There's three really good racetracks coming up for Dallas. Who's gonna have to be on it the last three races? All right, one more podium story. Here we go. This marks Cody Cop's second podium this season. And my friend out there in a three lap shootout, you guys look like you were riding bulls out there, just bucking around the back and you were able to hold on. First of all, how much fun was that three lap shootout? And secondly, how were you able to decipher lines while holding on in such a, an aggressive track? They kind of let the track go there towards the end. And uh, man, that three lap, shoot, three lap shootout was just carnage. Uh, every man for himself. and. We were a little aggressive, and you have to do it on a track like this. So uh, it started fourth, came out third. We'll take it. Earlier in the day, you had your dad riding the amateur classes. You had feedback coming from all places, including James Rispoli. How nice was it to have such a deep support system here? Yeah, it's key on a track like this. you got to have people watching from all over. And, uh, yeah, having everybody around the my pits is huge, especially my dad. Can't thank him enough for everything this year. He's working his butt off, and uh, we're getting somewhere. Huge shout-out to my whole team. Sending love back home and uh, ready for SAC next weekend. Well done on rounding out the podium, Cody. 
Yes, yeah, Sacramento, or back to the miles, will be our next event. That is a legendary one. Great to have it back on the calendar. Catch coverage September 26th at 11 p.m. Eastern here on NBCSN, the Law Tiger Sacramento Mile. Clutch riding for Dallas Daniels. Got to be impressed there, Brad. Yeah, definitely really impressed. And Trevor Bruner is riding great, great all weekend long, too. It's really tightened up the championship battle. It's going to be exciting at Sacramento. So it will be up to Max Well to respond as Dallas Daniels retakes the points lead. Great racing. We had exactly what we expected on the short track. For Brad Baker, Chris DeBeat, I'm Jason Wygant. Congratulations.